Gaza tells us who we are. Some days it's hard to say which is more horrific, the Gaza genocide itself or the moral decay throughout our society which makes it possible. I mean, the atrocities in Gaza have a couple million victims. If you add up the populations of the US, Europe, Canada, and Australia, you've got around a billion people living in a dystopia whose collective conscience is so warped and twisted that they'd allow their government to support a live-streamed genocide in full view of the entire world. A billion people who are so morally bankrupt that they find it tolerable for such a nightmare to be inflicted upon their fellow human beings right in front of them. This has been especially pronounced during the heat of a U.S. presidential race, with tens of millions of voters falling all over themselves to cognitively sweep Gaza under the carpet so they can throw their support behind one of the two mainstream candidates who've both pledged to support the Zionist state which is perpetrating this genocide. At best, they see Israel's crimes as an annoying side issue, which the left keeps disrupting their Kamala parties about. And at worst, they support Israel's actions entirely. What a pointless, meaningless, soulless way to live. What a betrayal of truth and of our own humanity. How could anyone possibly find satisfaction in that kind of zombie-like existence? mindlessly shuffling along to the beat of the status quo, devouring human flesh because it's more comfortable than the cognitive dissonance which would come with divorcing the power-serving worldview you've been indoctrinated from birth into espousing. I was listening to an interview with the doctor who worked in Gaza during the genocide, and he discussed the time many months ago when the IDF forced the evacuation of a hospital and left four premature babies to die in their incubators after assuring the staff they'd be taken care of. Their tiny bodies were found decomposing weeks later after Israeli forces cleared out of the area. How did that one incident, just by itself, not stop the world? How did it not stop us all in our tracks and force us to re-evaluate everything that led to this point? It wasn't a secret that those four babies died. It was in the mainstream news. It was right there, right in front of us, and we did nothing. Such atrocities have been happening on a daily basis for 13 months now, and still nothing. We've got to live like this. We've got to live in this genocidal dystopia, surrounded by shambling sleepwalkers covered in human blood. Our lives here in the West are far, far more comfortable than the lives of people in Gaza, but they are also far less truthful and far less capable of nourishing the human spirit. We marinate in lies and psychopathy, watch lies and psychopathy, eat, drink, sleep, and breathe lies and psychopathy. Our minds are full of garbage, and our hearts are full of shit, and we are wading around up to our ankles in the blood, sweat, and tears of the global south. This festering sore of a civilization is the only soil in which the western-backed genocide in Gaza could take root. The people in Gaza have to suffer the consequences of who we are and what we have become, but we have to live with who we are and what we have become. We're killing their babies and leaving them to rot. But we're the ones who have to live with the corpses of rotting babies in our souls. One way or another, the killing in Gaza will end one day. But the forces within us which gave rise to that butchery will live on long after the sounds of the drones and explosions have ceased. We will have to live like that. We will have to live knowing this is who we are.